everybody welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel hi hello i am little amazon or you can call me la or z i have many names you can call me whatever you want just don't call me late to dinner <laughs> today we are going to be making a face cast wonderful little thingies uh you can see mine is a little janky <laughs> i made this one uh probably about three or four years ago she still serves her purpose but i think i think i need to update her just a little bit so these bad boys are pretty cool because you can build your prosthetics straight onto the face cast and then when you peel them off the prosthetics will actually fit your face so it won't feel weird or anything like that uh, i use this often with latex paste which i will show you in a future video and these are super duper easy to make all you need is a bowl of water uh, some vaseline very important some plaster bandages they look like this and plaster of Paris powder. Okay, now I know a few people complain about this method because they say that using these bandages on your skin is not super safe because basically there are bandages that have the plaster of Paris like powder in them. So you dip the bandages in water, you lay it over your face and then as it dries it hardens and then you peel the mask off your face. I am going to debunk this right now before I even start creating the face cast yes it is unsafe for your skin if you keep it on for a really really long time it's sort of like okay as as the plaster of paris cures as it dries it starts warming up let me use this analogy if you switch the oven on and you put your hand inside the oven for five minutes as it's busy heating up your hand will be fine it won't burn but if you keep your hand in there for a really really long time until the oven is 100 percent warmed up you're gonna feel it it's the same with these we are only going to have these bandages on our face for like five minutes until they dry and then we're gonna take it off it's not enough time to burn your skin you might feel a little bit of warmth but we're gonna take it off before it actually can do damage to your skin. So if I see anybody in the comments coming in and being like, oh my gosh, but that is so bad for your skin. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will put Lego next to your bed. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so because I wanted to make my face cast's forehead quite big, I just covered my hair in some cling wrap and stuck it down using some latex. But you can use whatever sort of skin safe adhesive you have, or if you're just going to do up to your hairline, this is fine as well. Very important, make sure you cover your eyebrows and your eyelashes in a thick layer of Vaseline. And then you can cover the rest of your face in... Uh, a, quite a thin layer of Vaseline. It doesn't need to be too thick or goopy. It's just to protect your skin for when you peel the mask off your face so that it doesn't hurt you because you do have little baby hairs on your face. Okay, so you're going to cut strips of that plaster bandage and you're going to dip it into the water. Make sure it's saturated so that it activates the powder. And then you're going to want to squeeze out the excess water and then lay the bandages on your face. Make sure that you push the bandages into every nook and cranny to get all the details of your face. And rub the bandages so that there aren't any holes. It needs to be super duper smooth, otherwise this won't work. Make sure that you do not cover your nostrils because you need to breathe. <laughs> and also when you're going through that little nose piece between your eyes, I recommend twisting the bandages so that there's like a little thin piece that makes it a little bit easier. I also went under my chin because as I said, I wanted to make this quite a big face cast. Also, you're going to want to do many, many layers of this so that your face cast mold is quite thick and quite strong. This whole process, putting all of the layers on and waiting for it to dry, took me about 10 minutes. Now you can do your eyes while it is on your face. If you are feeling comfortable with it, I am going to show you how to do it. You are going to want to close your eye, squeeze out 
all of the water that you can before you put it on your eye because you do not want this liquid to get into your eye. So close your eye, put the bandage on and then push it into the holes. But I'm also going to show you how to do it the other way as well. I have now felt that my mask is dry so I am now just making faces underneath my mask to release it from my face and now I'm going to take the cling wrap off and just very gently and slowly pull it off my face. It gives a little bit of resistance because there's like a suction forming but it does come off quite easily. So this is what my face cast looks like. I'm now going to show you how to plug up the nostrils and the other eye area. So you're basically going to want to just lay it flat and then take more of those bandages and just sort of smush it in there. Try and push the bandages like into the nose holes as well, just so that it gives you that nostril sort of vibe. <laughs> That's what it looks like on the inside. And then when you do the eye, you're going to do the same thing, just lay it over. Make sure that you get all of the holes out. Make sure that you push the bandages against the mask as much as you can so that there isn't any weird bulges on the eye area once you pour the uh, plaster of Paris powder in there and once it comes off because there will be these bulges that you have to scrape off the mask. Okay, so the plaster of Paris powder, you're going to want to mix two parts plaster to one part water. You are going to pour the water into the bowl and then you are going to sprinkle the powder over the water, leave it for 60 seconds, and then you are going to want to stir it. I realized that my camera had stopped recording while I was doing this, so that's why you can see in the beginning my water looks a little bit murky. You can see it's become a creamy consistency, and you're gonna wanna now put your face cast into like a shoe box, just with some towels in it to keep it level. Okay, hold up. I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to stop you right there. Uh, I forgot a step in my process. Please don't forget to coat the inside of your face mold with Vaseline before you pour the plaster of Paris in because it will make the removal so much easier for you. I forgot to do that <laughs> and it's not a problem if you forget you won't have an issue getting your face cast out my face cast came out perfectly it's just extra work and it's just a little bit harder okay carrying on pour the plaster of paris into the mask very slowly and use whatever utensil you are using use that to push the plaster of paris into the little holes like into the nose into the eye areas and all of that stuff before pouring the rest of the plaster of paris once it's poured in you can tap the bottom or sort of tap the box against the table to try and bring all of the bubbles up to the surface i also like to lift the box up and just tap my hand underneath the box i feel like that helps as well I like to leave this to dry at least overnight, but mine actually dried for like three days or something before I removed it from the mold. Okay, so now you can see that it has hardened and <laughs> you can see how the mask is coming apart from the face cast. Uh, it's just sticking a little bit more than I would have liked and I did have to go and run my face cast under some water and grab a sponge to get all of this extra grey goopy awfulness off. <laughs> I tried to use a knife to scrape it off but it didn't really work out so well so I just ran it under some water and wiped it with a sponge. I'm also just picking off the extra plaster of Paris bits from the back. Now if you have some like clay tools or something you can use those. I couldn't find mine though so I'm just using <laughs> the back of a butter knife. But this is the point where you can go in and refine all the details of your face. This is where you get to really know your face. <laughs> um, but you go, just go in, refine all the details. Uh, if there's any weird bumps like I had by the nose or by the eye, then you can just scrape it off. It's quite easy to, to finesse. I also like to just go in by the lip area and just make sure that the lips are really well defined. Now I'm taking some sandpaper and I'm just making sure that it is super duper smooth and for some reason mine was still quite, uh, I don't know, tacky and weird feeling so there was this like goopy stuff coming off onto my sandpaper block so I just scraped it off with my nail 
and use that to cover up the little holes that I could see. I don't know if you're supposed to do this, but that's what I did and it seemed to work. It covered up the holes quite nicely. Uh, with my other face cast, I just used Mod Podge to fill in those holes. But I found that this weird goopiness worked wonders. And now to protect your face cast, you can use Mod Podge or wood glue. Just apply a few layers over the face cast, making sure that it dries in between each layer. And yeah, if your face cast starts to get a little bit janky, what's really cool is that you can peel off the wood glue or the Mod Podge layer and just reapply it later and then your face cast will look as good as new. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share to all of your special effects loving friends. Bye!